Rushing Wind Biker Church at 10 Peach Tree Court in Holbrook, New York, the crossroads of freedom and faith. God bless you all. Jesus loves you all. How are we doing? Awesome. I get to multitask tonight. Let's pray. Father, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, Lord the, uh, the greatest gift humanity will ever know. Uh, Lord, as we, we, we stand in this place and just, just contemplate um, the fact that the, the God who created the stars and the heavens and the planets, the solar systems, Lord, just thought of us. Lord, thought of us and, and saw what humanity had, had, had come to. And Lord, you, you came to our rescue. And Lord, as we celebrate the day that you came in flesh and blood, to walk among us, Lord, to let us see a better way, to teach us, Lord, to show us what life could be. Lord, tonight, let us grow closer to you. Uh, Lord, there are some here that are very close to you, and there are some here that may be distant. But today we come, Lord, to celebrate just uh, what your son brought to this humanity. Lord, give your people an ear to hear. And Lord, we just want to honor you tonight with our presence as we listen to you speak to us. Hide me behind the cross of your son. Allow your words to be heard uh, and not mine. And that's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, it's Christmas. Almost. Reminds me of a line from one of my favorite. If you hear it the first time, my mind goes off in like really, really weird, freaky things. Probably the drugs I did back in the 70s. But, you know, my favorite character, this has nothing to do with my message, is, uh, is, is the Burger Meister, Meister Burger. Has anybody seen that show? Yes. Yeah. Right? A Merry Christmas, I don't think. You remember that line? Well, Christmas every year is, is a day to celebrate. And, uh, and it's not about the toys, and it's not about um, the tree. Uh, it's about what God had given us 2,000 years ago. You know, over the last two weeks, I've preached through a series, a Christmas series, on guess who's coming to Christmas. And uh, it started with um, Unto Us a Child is Given. And we talked about how God wants us to stay children. And the, the problem is we grow up and we start to see eyes through eyes of, of what we consider adults who have gone through a hard life, watching a hard world, very jaded. And part of what, what Jesus came was to bring a childlike innocence that no matter what happened in his life, he, he hoped and he was generous and he was loving and caring. And then last week we talked about the Son of Man being the identity that Jesus embraced the most because it was his mission to come into our humanity and be one of us. And today we're going to look at a third identity, which is Emmanuel, God with us. And as we look at, at this particular um, identity of Christ, as we move into the celebration of, of the day we commemorate that, uh, that God took on flesh and blood. Uh, I believe that there's something God wants to just download into everyone here. Um, whether you're a follower of Jesus Christ, whether you're on the fence, or whether you're on the other side of the fence, uh, I believe God has, uh, has something for all of us today. This is a lot different than what I had anticipated when I decided to, to preach this particular message. Um, because it's going to be a more contemplative message. You know, this is a great day of celebration. But I want to also, as we celebrate, understand what we celebrate. And that our celebration isn't just for us who have a Savior. Because Jesus didn't just come to save us. He came to save the world. And so this holiday we celebrate as Christians is actually not a Christian holiday. It's a humanity holiday, because God came and gave his son that whosoever, 
and, and he came and, and took on flesh and blood and went through a cross that the entire world, through him, could have everlasting life. They could step into life here on a more, more just dynamic and incredible way. And again, it's, it's our choice. But Jesus was a gift to all of humanity, not just to the Christians, and not just a Messiah to the Jews. And so that's where I want to talk a little bit today. Um, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. This is uh, Isaiah prophesying some 700 or so years before Jesus was born. And he says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son. And she will call his name Emmanuel. And this was some 700 years uh, before Jesus came as a, as a child. Now, we fast forward to the story, and, and, and the Holy Spirit comes on Mary, and, and all of a sudden she finds herself with a child through the Holy Spirit. And, and, then, and then there's the, the man that she's supposed to marry. And imagine the, the, uh, that guy. You know, and, and uh, I've done messages on Joseph. He's kind of the unsung hero, you know, because he's engaged to be married, and all of a sudden his wife is with child um, of God. Um, I don't know what would go through your mind, um, but I'm kind of, I'm not sure I'm kind of going along with that program, you know, because we're human and we can't, can't really look at, at things from that perspective. And so what happens is God sends an angel to Joseph. And this is what the angel says to Joseph. Because Joseph at this point was gonna, gonna send his wife away so that she wouldn't have to face the shame. And basically part ways and kind of be done with it. And so um, when he had considered this, Joseph, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you will call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And then the writer of Matthew, which is Matthew, reminds the reader, which is us, that this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet some 700 years prior. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And, and so as we, as we look at this, this, this currents of, of God actually coming down and being with us, and by the title Emmanuel, it's a statement that God is saying, this is, this is really happening. This is the purpose that I've come for. There's two aspects of this identity as Emmanuel, which I want to touch on. One is going to be profound, and I think maybe... Um, enlightening to people who follow Jesus. But for those who don't follow Jesus here, it's also going to help you understand why Jesus came and, and why he, he wanted to save humanity and what us as believers in Christ are supposed to be to, to those who aren't followers. And, and then as I end the message, I'm going to have a point I want to make to everyone here. A very powerful point that I think is going to touch all of us as it did as I put this together this week. Scriptures say that God gave us his only begotten son. This is the greatest gift ever given. It's kind of the, the backdrop and the reason why gift giving is part of what we celebrate. Because Jesus was a gift from God to save humanity. And it really is the ultimate gift because only God can save a broken creation that has went totally haywire over the millennia uh, after we decided we just wanted to have our own way and not do things uh, as he said was best. You know, and, and as we sit here today as, as people who maybe know the story, people that follow Jesus Christ, we need to understand why we're here. You know, because I think the Christian church has absorbed the story. And we've made it our story. And almost where we're greedy and we're possessive of the story. But that's not, that's not what God was doing. 
God came for everyone. And yes, people have to make their own decisions. But I think we have kind of gone off base where, you know, we, we get so celebratory at times that we don't think of the broken people out there that don't have a savior, whose life is just going to pot and, and they have no, no hope. And so what is our part in all this? Well, the bottom line is if you're here and you're a follower of Jesus, you're a gift to the world. That's your part. Because God came and he gave us Jesus Christ to show us a way. And yes, to, to die for our sins and, and create a, a payment for what we would do. But that's a 2,000 year old story, isn't it? You know, over 2,000 years ago, or almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross, and they buried him in the ground, and then he rose from the dead, and then he walked the earth for 40 days, and then he ascended to heaven. Um, and I think too many times we view that as almost the end of the story, other than what we can absorb internally ourselves by having a revelation of who Jesus really was. And we forget that we are God's gift to the world. See, the church is God's gift to the world. Because the church is supposed to be what Jesus Christ was to the world. The hands and the feet. And so, if you're here and you are truly a saved person, you are Emmanuel to the world. You are God's presence to a lost and dying world. Just think about the importance of that. You know, we know the importance of Jesus, but we're not called the body of Christ for nothing. We are, in essence, Emmanuel to the lost. So the lost can look at us and say, God is with us because of what the church is supposed to be doing and is supposed to look like. You know, and, and, and this, this faith and this belief system and this thing we call Christianity is kind of a, a, a present to the world. But what we've done to it has made it not look like a present to the world. Because the church was supposed to serve and love. And even today, if you look out in the, in the, the cross section of the world, most of your hospitals started as Christian hospitals. Christianity started hospitals to be able to heal the body and, and, and serve humanity. That's why a lot of your hospitals, they have saints' names. You know, and, and you know, St. Jude's Hospital and, and, and all these other things. Because the church was doing the work of the church. And you didn't have to be Christian to come to the hospital because the church is made to serve, serve everyone. And as I said, Jesus is the, the savior of all. And we can't hold him to ourselves. Luke chapter two, verses 10 to 14 says, and the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I give you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this day in the city of David is born a savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an, uh, an angel, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Jesus came in our purpose of our existence is to bring peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Because that's what Jesus came to do. And when Jesus ascended and sent his Holy Spirit to dwell in us, if we're truly followers, our calling now is to, to bring peace and goodwill. You know, not to attack and judge. Because peace and goodwill draws people to God. And it opens their eyes to the Holy Spirit, saying Jesus was who he was. Because my people have been transformed 
into what he was. And then having people understand what, what salvation is all about is to transform our life now to be like Jesus. And not just fire insurance or life insurance, depending on how you look at it. You know, Jesus came to bring joy to all people. It wasn't exclusive to the Jews. It's not supposed to be exclusive to the Christians. Because we are supposed to be purveyors of joy. Because you are Emmanuel. When we walk out here and we go into a lost world, we are what God is going to use to transform the world in the same way Jesus did when he walked this earth. Okay. We gotta start making that announcement so people can remember, you know? And so, it wasn't supposed to be a temporary condition. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men is supposed to be through the, the timeline of the human experience. Now how could that happen if Jesus ascended and go into heaven? It's because we are now walking in the calling that Jesus had. And we are Emmanuel. You know, we get together and, and we have this celebration once a year of Christmas and we celebrate our Savior, and rightly so. And we have eternal life and we have just a life that's abundant and we should celebrate. But that's not really what the celebration was supposed to be about. The celebration was God put us here to change the world. Jesus came to change the world. And when you give your life to Christ, you're here to change the world, whatever portion of the world that you get a chance to touch in your life. That's our entire purpose of being saved. See, Jesus didn't reveal himself to, to me so that I could have a good life and go to heaven. Jesus revealed himself to me so I could share whatever he's put in me with people. And the love that he has for me comes through me. And that's what all of us are supposed to do. Otherwise, it's a selfish proposition. And unfortunately, kind of humanity has made it in many ways a selfish proposition. You know, when you give a, a gift to someone, there's an anticipation, isn't there? So now if you give somebody a gift and on the package, on the outside it says Gucci, or Armani, you know, or Fabergé, Coors, not Coors the beer, for those who drink it. Michael Kors, Louis Vuitton, you know? Or in bigger packages, let's say Rolls Royce. Harley Davidson. You know? There's an anticipation, right? And so what, what, what we were supposed to be, what the church was supposed to be, was when we show up, there's supposed to be an anticipation. And now when you see, like, like there's hurricanes, and there's tsunamis and, 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 and earthquakes. You see the Christians show up. And the people are just so grateful that the trucks that say, you know, the Southern Baptist Convention, or they'll say World Vision, because the Christians have showed up. Not to convert them, but to love them. Good tidings for all men peace into their lives. And those are broad things that each one of us individually are supposed to be bringing. Us as a corporate entity of Jesus Christ here, that's what we're supposed to be bringing. A hope. Because if we call ourselves followers of Christ, and we go somewhere, and, and all of a sudden they unwrap us in relationship, and they get to know us, and they find the box is empty, it becomes an empty faith. And it becomes nothing more than um, another godless religion of people who say good things. But when you peel off the layers, they're just as selfish as everyone else. 
We're the facilitators of great joy. Are we? I pray we are. I pray we need to understand that the world needs joy. And they need joy in the stuff they're going through that's horrible at times. And if they can see it's possible in us, it gives them hope for themselves. And then Jesus gets seen. Just as Jesus walked the earth and, and, and he had a joy. And he got persecuted tremendously, but he never wavered. He was going to love if it killed him. And it did. And he was going to show mercy and compassion if it killed him. And it did. And he wasn't going to address evil with evil, but with love, even if it killed him. And it did. Because he was Emmanuel. And he was God with us. Because God didn't want us to see, to go through this life alone. And, and as we look at ourselves, as, as people who follow Christ, and those here who may not be in that place now, understand this is, this is what we aspire to. This is what this faith in Jesus Christ was all about. You know, you have people that they might go to church and they might carry a Bible around. And they might even teach Sunday schools. And they might even go on missions. But when you get to know them, you start peeling things off, you find out sometimes that the box is empty. And it's like somebody just handed you a Louis Vuitton box and, and you got excited that someone actually cared enough to, to give you something of such value. And you, you took the paper off and, and opened the box and it was empty. And, and it's gotta break our heart when people are let down because they need hope, and we have the only hope that's really tangible. We have the only hope, because we are Emmanuel. The church and you are God in the world. It's the only hope that they have. You know, Jesus is the very essence of our God, right? He's the very essence of our God. And so if we say we follow Jesus and live in this life, and they don't see what they see in Jesus. It becomes an empty philosophy. But God is with us, isn't he? Yes. And us who have been touched, it's the most extraordinary thing we've ever had happen in our life. But when we celebrate Christmas, don't make it all about we're happy what God gave us. Yeah? We should have more joy at what God gave the world, and we get to participate. That should be our, our mindset this Christmas, because it'll give you a joy that you won't, you won't imagine. I had a very, um, you ever do something and you're so ashamed of yourself? You don't have to answer. <laughs> um, Thursday, it was pouring out, wasn't it? Just a deluge, you know. And, and, and you know, I had to go to Home Depot. I went to three or four stores, and I couldn't get the stuff I wanted. Can't find tinsel. I don't know where you get tinsel these days, but I'm a tinsel fanatic. <laughs> Last year, I went to 12 stores, and I finally found one. It was colored. I didn't want the colored, but that's all I could find. Now I can't find tinsel. So I'm like not really in a great mood because I didn't find my tinsel. And so I go to Home Depot and, and I park as close as I can because it's just pouring. And, uh, and I get out of the car and it's just, you know, it was raining so hard, you know, that it doesn't matter if you gotta go three feet, you're soaked when you get there. And so I walk out and I go, go to go to Home Depot and there's a homeless guy standing there and he's got some change in his hands. He said, you have some change. He said, not right now. And I just walked in the store. Do you know I didn't get 10 feet? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. You know? I got so wrapped up in this. I was wet, and, and the day was just messed up. And, and, and here was this guy, and, and, and he was the real. You can see by his hands. He's probably lived outside for maybe years. And just what he's wearing, and he was that, that guy. You know? And uh, I got about 10 feet. 
said, what are you doing? And so I, I went back outside. And because of my guilt, I gave him a 10. Because <laughs> sometimes we think we can buy away our guilt, don't we? You know? I had a couple singles, but you know, I was kind of, all right, God, I blew it. So, you know, and so, uh, and he started crying. And uh, he was so appreciative. And I just took him in my arms and hugged him. I told him how much Jesus loved him. I said, thank you, I need to hear that. And we had a little conversation. And uh, I came away so blessed, but also so critical of myself, you know, because of how I reacted initially, because I caught up and I was wet, you know. And uh, what I experienced in that moment, you can't buy. As much as he might have been blessed, the smile on his face, and I got to pray with him. And then I, I remembered I had two coats in the car that I was going to bring to Lighthouse Mission, and I forgot. You know, so I, I, when I came out of the store, I went to the car, and I said, you know, this is a waterproof jacket. You should have seen him take his jacket off so fast. And he put the jacket on. It didn't quite fit. It was just about fit, but close enough. And uh, it changes you, you know. And I got to be God with this man in the moment. I said, Jesus loves you. You know, and, and God's got you. And I prayed for him. And if you ever buy Home Depot and Shirley, his name's David. Um, you know, you, you feel bad sometimes because you want to take him home, but you can't take him home. You know? But this is what's supposed to happen. In the individual times and in the big times, and as a church, you know, I mean, I, I brought up something in Bible study Friday that how, how um, Sister Elaine, when she started Lighthouse Mission, she had 10 bologna cheese sandwiches. She just made them, got in the car, and went down Main Street, and just whenever she found a homeless one. We're going to start doing that. Because I said, why don't we do that? I couldn't follow up the reason. So if anybody wants to get involved in handing out some sandwiches, looking for homeless people, um, we're going to be doing that. And in your lives, I guarantee you pass people. And you know where they are, and you know where the corners are, and you may even know where they're in the woods. So, you know, and, and in a Bible study, we even had a guy that just handed me a hundred dollar bill, said, I'll buy the food, let's do this thing. This is Jesus. This is this is what we're supposed to do. So the world sees Emmanuel is here. God is with us. And God does his work through people. He does work through us. Good tidings of great joy. And as I close my eyes and see that man's face, as I handed him $10 and put a coat on him, I got to bring him good tidings of great joy. And it was only a moment. There was a small little bit of really the kingdom of God that went on. And Jesus came to give the world this. But he only came and lived in one man, in one body. That's why he had to go to heaven and send his Holy Spirit so his Spirit could now deal in all us individually. So we can be Emmanuel, God with the world. Is your life a package to the people around you that they see? They see something in you that they want. Whether it's joy that's unexplainable, whether it's peace when you're going through trials. Do they, they see that? I pray they do. But I pray that you get to the point that's not fabricated. Because as believers, we can fabricate things. We can look the part. And then when people get to know us, it's like, all right, it's just, you know, they kind of put that on. But real Jesus stuff is right to your soul. It's such an exciting thing. It's, as, as I walked away from Home Depot, I said, just thank you, Lord, for that, giving me the opportunity to be in that place. And that's what the world experienced when Jesus came. When the shepherds rejoiced and, and the, the angels were rejoicing. 
It was because hope came. God was not going to leave us alone anymore. The second part, um, as I wind down, if, uh, if the guys want to come up again. God with us. I know there's a lot of people that have had pretty hard lives in here. Maybe all of us have had pretty hard lives in here. And I don't know about you, but I've gone most of my life alone. Doesn't mean I didn't have a wife. Doesn't mean I didn't have a family. And then I have friends. And I think you know what I mean. When, when the pressures of life and the troubles and the cares and whatever it is, you just feel all alone in that place. And it breaks you. You don't know what to do with it. You know, and there's years that, you know, life was falling apart, and I had my wife, and, but the fact that what was happening was actually creating more havoc in the life of my wife and my kids, which made me feel more alone. Even though they loved me and they endured. And I don't know if, how many of you have felt that when life comes crashing down. It's like, I'm all alone. And you try to sort through things, and sometimes it's, it's hard. And I know I'm speaking to people in here tonight, because I know there's people in here that are feeling that they're all alone. You know? Uh, there's a quote that I read from Robin Williams that came out, I think, after he passed away, that you know, there were times he walked in a room full of people and felt all alone. And I think many of us have gone through that. And before Christ came in my life, I had lots of those times. That I just didn't want to go to sleep because the, the mind was going crazy. And, and as the burdens came more, I, I tried to push morning off as far as I could because every day brought more hard, hard heartbreak, you know, and the bills and business problems and, and, and stuff. And, and I know there's people in here that feel like they're all alone in this life. You know, when God looked down at humanity for, for 2,000 years and watched his children just killing themselves, making total havoc and, and suffering in their own lives, it broke God's heart. And, you know, every once in a while he would send Jesus to interact for a moment. It could have been a burning bush. It could have been a ladder and, you know, met Jacob. But um, God is my wife. It's, it's, sometimes it's interesting how God coordinates things. Because what my wife said before that, she had no idea where my message was going. Um, you ever have a, somebody you, you love go so far that you can't bear to look? Well, that was God for 400 years. He just couldn't watch what was happening to his children. And then one day he says, I have, to, I have to go down and let them know they're not alone. And so he came down so that we wouldn't have to go through life alone. That's what we celebrate on Christmas. It's when God said, you don't have to do this alone anymore. I'm here. You know, life just beats us up mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. But when we have someone that's walking through it with us, most of the time carrying us, because uh, we can't carry ourselves most of the time, we have Emmanuel. God is with us. And, uh, Isaiah the prophet, in chapter 41, God says, do not fear, for I'm with you. Don't anxiously look all around, for I am your God. I'll strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Well, you know who's at God's righteous right hand. That's where Jesus is. And he's the one that upholds us. 
And uh, Jesus calms the storm. Jesus calms the voices. Because he's in your life with you. He says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And if you're here and you're alone tonight, God's speaking to you. You know, if you just feel there's something gut-wrenching in, in, in what's happening in you, as you, your loneliness normally will get amplified before the moment of realizing who's the one that will take your loneliness away. See, Jesus came to be God with us. But his last words on earth were, I am with you always even until the end of the age. So he was saying, I'm not leaving. You don't have to go through life alone. He's still with us. As we, we sing Silent Night, the pastors want to come up. When I was in that place where I thought I was living life all alone, I was living life all alone. I couldn't find silence. There was always stuff in my head. The, the demons and the cares and, and everything is just shouting. You know, it could be telling you what's got to be done and you can't get it done. It could be guilt of things you've done in the past and, and, and all these things are. And I just wanted some silence. Uh, Lord, sh just shut the noise off. And this song is about that. When you listen to the words of Silent Night, it's because Jesus came in a world time when the world was chaotic. It was going haywire. People couldn't get away from their burdens. They couldn't get away from their cares. And I came to give them peace. Good tidings. If you're here tonight and, and you feel you've kind of reached a place where you don't want to fight this life alone anymore, Understand that Jesus is here. And Jesus is more than willing to come alongside you this night. And if you're here and you've maybe drifted, and sometimes as believers we can feel all alone. You know? Um, but you're not alone. He's with you. We can't go through this life without, without Jesus. You know? As we, uh, as we sing this song, and we light our candles, Jesus says, if you're bold before men, I will stand and be bold before God for you. And if you're in a place tonight where you don't want to be alone anymore, and you're feeling that, I think maybe I want to put my, my faith and this man that would be God, so that he can walk through life with me, because I can't do it anymore. While we're singing, and the lights are down, and we're lighting our candles, I'd like you to come forward, and we're going to pray with you. And we've all done this. It's the most important moment of your life. You know, there's anyone that needs to recommit, and just, you can't shut the, the, the noise off, because the enemy has found, found holes in your armor. And he's found places he could hide out and just torment you. We want to pray with you. Because tonight, we want a silent night. We want a holy night where everything is calm. And the outlook for the future is bright. That's what this is all about. So if the band wants to start singing, we're going to... Uh, you have, I, they, they handed out the words. They got the words? If you don't have the words, uh, where's Bob? Bob, who handed out the words? John did. Oh, John. Well, okay.
song. That's what Jesus came to give us. Peace on earth. Good will towards men. As, as followers of Christ, let's make it our purpose this year to become more of Emmanuel to the world. Because Jesus is still here. He said so himself. I'll be with you always. And he's in you. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to celebrate every year? Are we going to go out and we're going to light more candles? Amen? Amen. Father, we, uh, we thank you that you have anointed us the agents of peace. Father, as we, uh, as we hold our candles, Lord, let us hold our candles knowing that this represents our life. Lord, that we have to be that light to the world. Can't be hidden. Can't be all bright and cheery on the outside and then give people hope and then have the hope be dashed on the rocks of disappointment. Lord, we don't care what goes on outside of these walls as far as what the world of Christianity is doing. Let us raise this place up to be an agent of hope. Lord, if there's anyone here that, that just is struggling, Father, meet them in that place. Lord, continue to do the work to draw them. And Father, we, uh, we thank you for your son We thank you for one night, 2,000 years ago, a child who would be king, couldn't find a place to sleep, it was in an old barn, in a manger full of food for the animals. Humble beginnings. Many here need a humble beginning. Thank you for this community. Thank you for this night. Let Christmas never be the same. Let us never be the same as we move from this space with the power of love into a world that is 
waiting for good tidings of great joy. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless you all.